Our next speaker is a developer at Leap. Leap are one of our sponsors, our big sponsors for this event. So thank you, Leap, for helping us to put on this amazing <laughs> conference. You've come all the way from Switzerland. Yeah. On the night train. Yeah. So right another today. one of yeah, right this morning on time. Um, and at Leap, you've recently been working on Venger, right? That's correct. We it's talked project. about earlier some very complex uh, rules and requirements that yeah. Venger managed to handle pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Worked well. Good, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about Svelte. I'm not going to say any more because you will hear it now. Please give a warm welcome to Jörg. So hello, everyone. My name is Jörg, and today I would like to show you the magic of Svelte. You might gonna ask yourself, why am I talking about the front-end framework and not about Venture? First of all, I really think Svelte is awesome, as Venture is, of course. Second of all, uh, I think, as well, you should consider it if you build your next storefront in your next Venture project, because it's great. And I also think um, what Michael mentioned in the talk before, the admin UI refresh should also be done in Svelte. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. <laughs> so just quickly, <laughs> um, that's me, I'm Jörg, I'm from Switzerland, as already said, I'm a full stack developer at Leap, and quite recently we launched a big project of ourselves, a B2B shop um, for stainless steel products for the Hans Kohler AG, and of course it's based on Venture, which is great. Um, it's a rather big project, uh, over one and a half year of development went into it. So as you can imagine, we built lots of custom features, not only on the vendor side, but also on the front end side. And as you might guess, we built the front end with Svelte and SvelteKit. Um, before the project, or before we started, um, we weren't really used um, to make uh, big projects with Svelte. We didn't have lots of experience in it. Um, only one dev um, lot, like brought it up and we asked ourselves the, the big questions, is the community big enough of Svelte? Um, and which means for me also, are the common problems already solved or do I have to reinvent the wheel for like everything I want to build? The second big question is, is the ecosystem big enough? And as you see on the right, uh, Svelte, the, the adoption or the download rates, which I took from NPMJS last week, it's way behind its competitors like React and Vue with like yeah, more than 10 times more downloads for React. And the, this comes uh, to the question, are there Svelte specific libraries out there? Because as I know it from building stuff in React and Vue and Angular as well, you always need like framework specific things like component libraries, i18n solutions, routing, and so on. So two years left uh, afterwards, after the project, I have to say we really didn't face any problems at all. We could build any use case we wanted or the client wanted. And that has a, a big reason. And one of that is that um, Svelte does it a little bit different than like Vue and React. Um, it has no abstraction between itself and the DOM. This means it has no virtual DOM, which the other tools re uh, rely on. Um, and it means also you can like use any JavaScript library as, as you want with Svelte. Because normally JavaScript libraries modify at some point the DOM, it's a carousel or whatever, and it modifies the DOM. And with React and Vue, you always have to worry about, okay, if the DOM changes, React doesn't know about it. In Svelte, that's not the case. Svelte knows very well about your changes in the DOM. And here, uh, a little uh, example, uh, Swiper, that's a carousel library we use for a lot of projects uh, for ourselves. Um, you see, when you head to the docs, there is Swiper React, Swiper View, but no Swiper Svelte. And of course, it's the reason I just told you, you can use Swiper Core, just default implementation. You don't need any specific library. So then we started with uh, implementing the store, and there were lots of things I had to unlearn coming from other um, frameworks. Uh, basic things as doing links. Links, it's just the basis of every website. It, website. The web was meant for that. And 
if you start with a new framework, you have to look up how to do links. And I think this is somehow stupid because here in React, you have to um, get the link component from React Router and pass a two property, which is also arbitrary. I have to look up in the docs. What can I pass to two? Yeah, a string, an object, and an whatever else. You, you, it's all specific to the library. Swell does it differently. Just use an anchor with an href. We all know that. That's the, probably the first year of school you learned that, and you, it should be done that way. The HTML was done, uh, it already brings you links. You don't have to reinvent it. Second thing, even more stupid, uh, stupid as I guess, assigning values to variables. Again, I don't want to bash React. I, I like React as well, but this is also something with uh, which I always had problems and uh, um, led to a lot of debugging. And we have here use state, um, which gives us a reactive variable, the counter, and the setter method, which I can change the counter. If I now set the counter to one and lock this, it first locks zero, which for me just doesn't make sense. Uh, of course, I know you, ne you need to wait till the next re-render happens and then it's one, but it's just not as you would expect it to behave. Again, on the right, you see it's valid solution. We have again this dollar state uh, function which came in with Svelte 5 quite recently. Um, it's also a function, it's quite similar as use state, but it gives you back a variable. And let, very, uh, let counter you very well know from JavaScript, that's default JavaScript. And as soon as you assign something to the counter and log it or use it, it's one. It's directly one. You don't have to wait for a re-render or stuff. So it makes it way easier to, uh, to read. Some other things, um, you might, uh, if you wrote stuff in Vue, you might got this warning once in a while. Um, uh, also a, a problem which happens a lot, you pass down a prop to a component and modify this prop inside the component. Not the best thing to do, I know, but there are very, there are lots of situations which can, which you can use that. Um, think about you build a form which you want to edit an address of a customer. You pass down the address as a prop and the customer should, be, should edit that props inside the customer form and then send it back to the server and it re-updates. In Svelte, easily possible. Svelte allows you to do that. You can also two-way bind everything that the parent component gets it back. So you have the choice what you want. And again, the DOM interactions are very welcome. I just told you before, without this abstraction between the DOM and Svelte, um, it's really welcome to do, and Svelte even recommends it for a lot of things. Here, an extract from the doc. Um, for external URLs, if you want to do a redirect, just use window.location equals URL, as it was meant to, because this exists for more than 30 years, probably. And you don't need to call go to, which is the Svelte specific method, to do a redirect. Really use browser standards. As we're coming to the approach of Svelte, uh, you already heard a bit. So Svelte's approach is it uses as much standard HTML as possible, as well as as much JavaScript core APIs as possible, which makes it for me really clear, uh, clean. You, you, you learn that already and you have it already learned. You don't need to learn new stuff. As we said, uh, as we saw, link is a link, an anchor with href, a URL which you might get from a route change with the prom and two is a URL, a default JavaScript URL object. It's nothing special and this makes it also easier to test afterwards. If you want to mock something, it's a standard URL, it's nothing special. If you want to build a form which posts data to the server, just use a HTML form. I will show you an example for that right afterwards. And what's always like is mind blowing for me, a Svelte app could be built to run completely without JavaScript. So you can build Svelte application, disable JavaScript, and it works. Of course, not everything works perfectly and it's not as smooth as you would expect it, but it works. And this is, this is crazy because it's JavaScript framework, right? Okay, talked enough. I want to show you some things. Um, here, let me make it a bit bigger. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, let's zoom in like this. Okay, so I have a Svelte application running with a lot of examples and demos and I can't go through everything because it's just a lightning talk, but I will show you at least the most important thing I, I think Svelte brings you. 
Um, and for me, the most important things uh, a JavaScript front-end framework should give you is first, reactivity, of course. You want to have reactive variables which update the DOM uh, accordingly. And the second thing is the data fetching is also quite important for me. Um, I want to know where do I need to fetch like stuff with credentials? How do I pass them to the client? How can I avoid that credentials leak to the, to the client? This is for me also something which is uh, quite different or quite difficult in, in some frameworks. And um, let's start with routing. I will show you the code first. So here, um, the routing is quite simple. If you know front end, it's, yeah, it's, it's folder based. You know that from React and Vue and I don't know Angular, uh, no, no Angular not. But um, it's, it's folder based, um, um, nothing special about it. But what, you, what we have here, we have two links. One routes to an internal page, which is right here. We have the product page with the my products lock and one links to an external page. When we look at that, reload the page. So if I go to this link, links with JavaScript, it, it does a route change. If I click on the external link, of course, it loads and the page, as you would expect it. What you might also have seen is when I hover over this, Swelp does something which was just mentioned in the talk before. It does uh, hover-based prefetching. That's by default, you can configure it as you want. You can also say uh, when I click it or when I tap it, it should re preload. But it preloads everything which is on that page. And when I now go to that page, it doesn't have to load anything. And it makes your um, page quite snappier for the client at least. It doesn't get faster, of course, but it's prefetched, so it, it feels faster, which I think is pretty cool. Then the data fetching. For this, I need to introduce a little bit the, the file system from Svelte. Um, on a, a route, you can have this um, plus page, special files, like these prefix files, and it goes through from page server over page to page Svelte. First call is always on the server file, if there exists one. And the page <coughs> server, as, it, as you might guess, is always run on the server. So here you can do stuff with credentials. Here you can access um, stuff with API keys or a database, whatever you want. It has a load function and it's standard JavaScript. It's a TypeScript file, so you can do whatever you want with JavaScript, load data from your database. I have here a random UUID as a user ID and everything which I pass in this object uh, or return in this object gets passed to the next page. And this is the page TS. This file is on the first run, run on the server, and afterwards run on the client. So don't do credential stuff here, but you can like prepare everything for the page itself, for the page component. And here we get the, the event data. This is our data we pass through. You see everything is still completely TypeScript. It's type safe. Um, I didn't do anything for that. Svelte does it. You can now modify whatever you want with that. I, I, I split the, the UUID and then I get a, a string array. I pass those two back with an object and everything which I return here is passed to the page Svelte file, which is the actual component. And you see here, I get this data. This data is still completely typed and I can use it. And yeah, I don't need to show it, but it's just this. We have the user ID and here the split the user ID. This just works. Go to reactivity. Um, this example, so we start easy um, to make a variable or a reactive variable in Svelte. You do it like uh, this. You've seen that uh, in the presentation before. We have this dollar state, um, which is yeah, kind of an adoption from, from use state, or it's, it's something different, but it, it feels the same as in React. Um, you can initialize a reactive variable, assign it the default value, and then as soon as you have this variable, you can change it here with the increment function um, or the reset function. As soon as I change it with this increment, it increments, of course. Next example is um, we pass it down as a prop. So we have the counter again, we have this increment and reset, and now we have a nested component where we pass down the, the counter. This nested component, uh, forget the, the stuff um, above, but it has again an increment which increments the counter inside the component, which I just mentioned before, which is possible. So when we do it here, when I increment it from root, the nested counter counts up as well. 
if I increment it from the nested component, only the nested stuff in, uh, increments. As soon as I change it in the root, of course, it resets and reloads. This works. If you want to now, and here, if you want to now two-way bind that stuff, the code is 100% the same as above. You just need to write bind here. And as soon as you bind it, you might guess it if I count it up. And also inside, it counts up the, the upper reactive variable. Very, very, very easy. Another cool thing um, is you can, in a nested component, you can export functions which you can call from outside. So the parent component can call the inside increment if you want to do that. There are examples we use that, not that often, but it, it can be it can be nice to do that. And here we need to like bind our component to a variable from the parent component, and then we can call the functions. And these functions are typed, everything is done, it's well, it works really well. And when I click now on let's reset first, so when I increment it now, um, increment now the counter inside the nested component from the root, and it only counts up the nested stuff and not the upper stuff, because I called it. Uh, component function. So my time is running up. One thing I want to show you, because this is really cool, forms. So to build forms, post data, like an address change or a customer um, email change or whatever, and there is something else you can define next to the load function on a server file. You can also have actions, and actions uh, create basically API endpoints, which you can call by a form post. I created a create action and a clear action, which just adds stuff to the to-do list I have. In the page, we have a standard form that's pure, uh, that's pure HTML. It has method post, it has an action. This is the only specific thing. This question mark slash says svelte, go to an action which you have defined. Uh, sorry, I have to. Go here first, this is the easy one. So this is the form, we have an input field, a submit button, and that's it. So if you open that, and let's clear here, and I now add something like drink beer, don't forget, and add, it reloads the page, it goes to that um, post thing, you see that's a whole page reload, it adds it to our list, and I can add other things, feed the cat, reload. This is a, a standard form. This works without JavaScript. If you go down, there is an enhanced way to do that, and the only thing which changes on this form is this use enhance. And it's really the only thing I changed to the upper form, and if you do that, this form here, I can say, don't forget to sleep. If I add it, it's not a full reload, it's done by JavaScript. So if I click here, you just see a post done by JavaScript. And now the coolest thing is I can now disable JavaScript, and still use this form. So add sleep again, if I do it, it does a reload, but it adds it to the list. It still works. And this is really cool. This is progressive enhancement as we heard it like years ago, and this is done right for me. So I guess my time is over, and I switch back to the presentation. Uh, here, so. That's it. Thanks a lot. Um, if you want to hear more, come to me.